This really is one of the most remarkable, desolate, beautiful places I've ever been in Australia. It's extraordinary. Just in a little town called Wentworth. This is called Perry Sand Hills. And what makes it amazing is that these dunes actually formed up after the last ice age about 40,000 years ago. It's beautiful, but to be honest, I came to this part of Australia, near Mildura, to discover great food. And looking around, it's pretty, but it's nothing to eat. So, I better keep wandering. So, from Perry Sand Hills, Mildura is about 40 k's away in the northwest of Victoria. The contrast is really incredible. But this is a recipe road trip, so I'm heading into one of Australia's largest food producing areas. Richard, you have about the most beautiful office I have ever been to. Absolutely gorgeous. Great to meet you, Ed. The trees are doing well. This is the oldest variety in Australia, the Imperial Mandarin. It's been here for years. Yeah. The most popular one still in Australia. We've got a lot of new exciting varieties that we're growing here, like the Delight Mandarin. Okay. Is there a right and a wrong way to peel a mandarin? I mean, look, I've always tried to put my finger in the hole bit in the, yeah, the bottom there. Yeah, the top. Start oh, yeah, the other side? Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, okay. You just put your finger in the top and off you go. It's the inside knowledge. <laughs> how many how many trees have you got on the farm here? Over 120,000 trees on this farm. And how many and what in terms of mandarins, what would you get off a tree? Uh, about 250 pieces. So you're looking somewhere around like three million mandarins from this one There's farm. Millions, yeah. Oh, that is so many mandarins. To walk into a, a supermarket anywhere in Australia and you can find our fruit. Fantastic. Well, I want to say that tastes pretty amazing. You going to show me these delights? I'm pretty interested to see yeah, that. Yeah, let's go over and have a look. This way? Yep. Well, Richard, it's another good looking treat. I, I notice these ones aren't quite as ripe, they're a bit green still. What's going on? Well, these are the new delight mandarins, so they're not ready until about mid August. So we'll finish the Imperials by the end of July and we'll get straight into these after that to extend our season. Do they taste different? No, very similar to Imperial, but the secret is they're seedless. Yeah, there's all these uh, nets. I suppose that's to keep the birds off, is it? No, no, that's to stop the bees getting into the trees when they're flowering. Otherwise, if we get bees from a seeded variety coming into these trees, we'll get seeds in the fruit. That's incredible. So if you've ever wondered what it takes to keep your mandarins deliciously seedless, it's a lot of planning and a lot of hard work. It's worth it? It's definitely worth it. Now, we all know that Australians eat a whole bunch of mandarins, pop them in the school lunchbox, or just enjoy them as a snack. And they're great for that. But you can also cook with them. So what I'm planning to do is to capture the flavour of the mandarin so you can enjoy them all year round. It's also the start of a really great dessert. It's pretty simple. I'm making popovers with homemade mandarin jam. As you probably guessed, we start with our mandarins. And what I'm going to make is a really easy jam. Get them peeled and save all of that peel. It's where all the flavour is going to come from. The coloured part on the outside of the skin has lots of flavour. That's where the essential oils are. While the white stuff on the inside, the pith, is quite bitter. But that doesn't mean it's your enemy. In fact, it's quite useful, particularly for a jam, because it gives it some balance. As a rule of thumb, I divide the skin into two piles. One part I leave the pith on, the other half I'll remove it. And the stuff where it's removed, I'll slice that up really finely. Once all the skin has been sliced, pop it into your saucepan with a kilo of caster sugar. And as for the mandarins themselves, you've got to run a knife through the middle, split them in two. If it's a seeded mandarin like these Imperials, just extract as many of those seeds as you can and put those in with the remaining skin. Then the actual mandarin, straight in the pot. This might seem a bit fiddly, but it's really worth doing. See, not only you don't want seeds in your jam, but the seeds are a really natural source of pectin, which is the stuff that will help the jam to set. With the reserved skin from earlier on and those seeds, we're going to wrap it up in a piece of cheesecloth, tie it up and pop it in like a little flavouring bag. It adds that bitterness and the pectin. This is a really old-fashioned technique that works really well. And lastly, throw in a little bit of water as well, just enough to cover the fruit. Set it on a medium heat and it's going to need to cook for about a couple of hours. So while it's simmering, why don't we get on to making that popover batter? You want to start with a cup of plain flour and just a pinch of salt. And into that, you're going to add a cup and a quarter of milk, a couple of eggs, and a little bit of vanilla. Oh, a bit of sugar for sweetness. Then the real trick is don't stir it too much. Just gently bring it together. While it sits, you better prep the oven. Heat extra virgin olive oil in half cup muffin moulds, then pour in the batter. These will need to bake in a hot oven for about 15 to 25 minutes, depends a bit on your oven, until they're puffy and deep golden. 
like a Yorkshire pudding, they rise up on the sides, which is good because it means we can fill the centres. To finish the jam, you'll need 500 grams of jam setting sugar. You'll find that in the baking aisle at your local supermarket. Bring it up to a boil and cook it rapidly for about 10 minutes. Then finally, a small amount of lemon juice and a tiny knob of butter. That just gives it a lovely gloss. There you go, that's perfect. Just needs to cool down. Lastly, we'll just need some diced up pieces of mandarin to garnish. To put our dessert together, just fill each pop over with a little bit of your mandarin jam and then top with whipped cream and some mandarin pieces. Oh, a little sprinkling of icing sugar doesn't go astray either. But the best thing is that any leftover jam, you can bottle it up and capture the flavour of mandarin season to enjoy throughout the entire year, which is really brilliant, from breakfast toast to all kinds of desserts. So with one little recipe, you can capture all this for your place. Sweet, delicious, that's amazing. The secret to my next recipe has my road trip through beautiful Mildura continues.